Good afternoon, passengers, and welcome back to yet another T. Martin Airlines flight. We've got an incredibly exciting itinerary ahead of us today. This is one we've been looking forward to offering for quite some time now, since the very start of the series. Welcome to John F. Kennedy International Airport here in the great city of New York. This is going to be a fantastic time. We've got a lot of sights and sounds to check out, some points of interest, some fun facts, and uh, we are going to be checking out the biggest city in the U.S., and I believe it's close to the top 10 in the world. I think it might be like 10th or 11th or something like that, but um, it should be a good time. So we're, we're going to go ahead and get ready to fly. Let's, uh, let's check this thing out. First of all, there's a new plane that we've never used before. This is the JMB VL3, and if you want me to be honest... I really like it. I like the look of this thing a lot. I feel like it's really sleek, very sporty, like a, a sports car kind of. If we look at the inside here, I mean, you guys can see, first of all, all electronic, nice displays, that sort of thing. You've got this bubble cockpit thing going on, just completely unobstructed, apart from like a little window hole. What is that for? Do you like pass a hot dog through there if the pilot gets hungry? Look at these seats, dude. Like this, it looks like a sports car. We've got perforated leather seats with the nice side pockets. I mean, it almost looks like a Bugatti seat or something. Like it looks so trendy and new and, and sporty. We've got some, some room for luggage in the back there. Not too much. This is just kind of like a, a little joy rider, little, little weekend trip taker. Uh, go ahead and leave the city and get out to Long Island or something like that. But uh, I'm excited to check it out. So we'll, we'll see what she's got. We're going to go ahead and release the parking brake. We're going to push this throttle forward, and we're going to see if we can take off. So, uh, yeah, take it off from runway 31L here at JFK. JFK is one of the busiest airports in the world. It's the 22nd busiest, to be exact, the 6th busiest in the U.S., and uh, there isn't a continent that you can't fly to from this airport, except for Antarctica. There's not a, a, an inhabited continent. This is, is one of the major hubs of the world, and uh, it's in one of the greatest cities in the world, the Big Apple. It's right right there, right on the horizon. That's where we're gonna be heading. I believe that's Lower Manhattan right there, and then that's kind of like the, the upper north end and stuff. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't spent that much time in New York. I've been a few times. I'm definitely not an expert. I know a lot of you guys are going to know a lot more than me, so I'm sorry if I'm mistaken or I sound stupid or something like that. If you guys have any fun facts, feel free to, to leave them down in the comments, but uh, I'm just excited to check it out, man. We're, we're here. We're playing on the new PC. I, um, I've been wanting to do this one for a while. My old PC just couldn't handle it, dude. I, I attempted it. We were getting like 10 frames per second, so it should be interesting to see how this one works out. We're going to go ahead and put the flaps and the landing gear up. The landing gear on this bad boy is pretty sick. Look at that. That's awesome. But um, yeah, it just it, it couldn't handle it. We're running about 40 frames right now, whereas in Bora Bora yesterday, we were getting like 70 at times. So it's, it's going to be a little bit rougher of a ride. There's just so much going on. This is one of the most congested places in the world. There are so many buildings, so many trees, so many roads. I mean, I'm not sure what's going on with this. But the game's not going to be perfect. Like, there's so much happening here. Just kind of, kind of know to expect that. Set your expectations accordingly, and uh, and we should be all right. So we're, uh, we're just going to head straight on in here. If we take a look at our VFR, I'm not even sure what to call this area by JFK. I know this is the New York Harbor. I think this is the lower harbor, and this is the upper harbor here. And then we've got Manhattan. This over here is New Jersey. I almost don't want to do this in case I get it wrong, but I'm, I'm going to try my best. So that's New Jersey. This is Manhattan. The Bronx is north of Manhattan. This is Staten Island. There's Brooklyn and Queens left. I'm pretty sure this is Brooklyn. And I'm pretty sure this up here is Queens. LaGuardia is up there. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's it. You guys, you guys will have to correct me if I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure we're kind of flying over Brooklyn right now. Hey, Nico. It's your cousin Roman. You want to go bowling? Some of those apartments down there look like something we'd see at a GTA 4. Looks like we've got some decent detail. You know, once once we pass over stuff, I think it starts to go out of focus. But if we zoom in, I mean, it's it's tough. It's not going to be perfect. It's definitely getting better in some areas. You guys can see it's updating as we get closer. But it, it, it just look look at all the buildings. Are you kidding me? You, we, we expect this game to be able to load all this in. That's just that's not possible. 
as long as it's got uh, as long as it's got the skyline looking pretty nice. And once we get over there, if it if it allows us to kind of you know get a feel for it, that's that's going to be pretty cool. So I think I think what we're going to do here, we're going to fly over Brooklyn. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna mainly go for I think this is the the Statue of Liberty right here. I think that's where we're going to start, and then we're going to move our way into Manhattan just because that's where we're going to see most everything. We're going to be able to see the One World Trade Center. We're going to be able to see the Empire State Building. We're going to be able to see Central Park. Yada, yada, yada. So we're, we're going to start heading that way and uh, we're going to see what we can get into. So a couple of facts about New York City. You guys know it wouldn't be a, a, a T. Martin Airlines flight without some facts. Uh, it's the largest U.S. city. Eight and a half million people live here. That means one in 38 people in the U.S. live in this city. That's how big it is. That is absolutely insane. It's known for its pizza, of course, New York pizza, the really big, kind of thin, but big slices that are so big you gotta fold them over to be able to eat them. Oh, so good. Just a New York cheese pizza, that's all you need. It, uh, it's actually known for pizza because it's the first city with a pizzeria in the US, like in history. This, this is where the first one was started. And I feel like a lot of restaurants, a lot of businesses are probably like that just because this is kind of the melting pot of the U.S. Like everybody immigrates here when they come here, especially in the past when everybody was coming over to start a new life in America. This is where you landed. This is where you, you got kind of dropped off and you had to learn to crawl and learn to walk and learn to work your way up. And, and a lot of people were able to do just that. So it's, it's kind of cool. It's a very eclectic city, lots of different pockets, lots of different... Uh, cultures. I think over 800 languages are spoken here, which makes it the most linguistically diverse city in the world. It's uh, it's really interesting. It's cool to see how so many different people from so many different corners of the earth can come to New York and uh, become successful. Hopefully, hopefully they're all successful. But um, yeah, just kind of kind of an interesting city in that regard. Uh, I've got a couple of other interesting ones, but let's start talking about these points of interest here. So it looks like we've got a cruise ship here which is awesome. I know Royal Caribbean sails out of New York. We were supposed to be on a cruise out of New York this year and coronavirus happens. Uh, this over here is Governor's Island. So this is kind of interesting. It's it's basically a large park. New York takes its, its parks and trees and greenery very seriously, as you guys will see. I mean, we have tons of buildings. It's the concrete jungle. But also look at all the grass that they've planted. Look at all these trees. I'm pretty sure if you live there, you can have the city come and plant a tree in front of your property for free. They're, they're happy to do that, which is which is awesome. But um, this island right here is, I don't know if it's a national park, I don't know if it's a city park or what it is, but basically it's a park. It's got a, a bunch of historic buildings there. It's got bike trails, cars aren't allowed, so you have to take a ferry out and then you can like walk around, you can bike around, there's breweries and stuff like that. It's basically an area for New Yorkers to be able to get away from the hustle and bustle. And, and just, you know, kind of be human again, which is uh, is kind of cool. I've never been there. I feel like it'd be kind of a cool place to go. I honestly don't know that much about it. What I know about it, I learned about 10 minutes ago before I started this episode. But, um, yeah, kind of interesting. Nobody lives here. These are all historic, historic buildings and uh, monuments and all kinds of stuff like that. But it's, it's this... 170 acre oasis in the middle of New York Harbor in the middle of all the the craziness So uh, you, you got to respect that now on over here across the harbor is good old Lady Liberty So uh, this is obviously a, a big point of interest a big drawing point This was given to us by France in 1886 as kind of a token of appreciation something that, that kind of represents our, our friendship and how we've been allies and that sort of thing. I think it was given to us on, on some sort of a 100th anniversary of something. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, there she is right there, representative of freedom and all kinds of cool stuff. You can, you can climb her, you can go up, you can walk up the stairs. I believe you can go all the way up to the top of the crown. You used to be able to go up to the, the, the flame, the torch, but I'm not sure if you can anymore. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But uh, it's about 350 feet tall. It's honestly not that big, like from a major monument perspective. There are many, many, many other monuments bigger. I mean, the, the French have the Eiffel Tower, which is like three times the size of that. Like, come on, guys. You build something as, as great as that, and then you give us this. Like, you, you could have done better. No, I'm just kidding. She cute, though. I, I like her. 
she obviously stands for for the american dream baby so you can't hate on that so we're gonna head on over here to lower manhattan this is where we are going to be able to see the one world trade center this right here this big beautiful building built on the grounds where the twin towers used to stand until that fateful day of 9 11 2001 she's now there along with the memorial which is just absolutely beautiful if you guys ever get the chance to go i would highly recommend it it's a uh definitely a, a very sad but a very interesting thing now i don't know how close we're going to be able to get to it i've i've heard that they don't let you i've heard there's some sort of an invisible barrier or something like that which is totally understandable i'm not gonna attempt to run into it but i kind of want to find out where the barrier is so we might we might try to try to push the boundary just a little bit i mean i don't want to be inconsiderate but i it, just for curiosity's sake, you know what I mean? I've heard there is one. It doesn't seem like there is one. I really don't want to do it. I really... Okay, I don't think there is one. I think if we wanted to run into that thing, we could have. I wanted to go around one last time just to get a, a final look at Lower Manhattan from inside the cockpit, just making the uh, the approach to the island. Dude, this... This is just so gorgeous. Just such a unique city. Now, uh, you know, I've, I've got one, one final fact for you guys. Obviously, tons of people here. When you when you see how many buildings there are, it's it's one of the most congested places in the world. And so with tons of people, come tons of cars, both personal vehicles, but especially taxi cabs. A yellow taxi in New York City is is obviously everywhere. They're all over the place, and uh, it's actually illegal to honk your horn in New York City. You 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 technically could be written up and get a ticket from the cops for honking your horn. Now, for anyone who's been to New York City, they know that nobody pays attention to that. Nobody obeys by that and the cops don't enforce that, but it is a, a law. Like you, you aren't supposed to honk your horn. However, if you're a woman, you are allowed to walk around completely topless. It's one of the only places in the world where you can do that, or at least in, in the US legally. So, uh, I mean, New Yorkers definitely have, you know, a few screws loose, but they've also got one thing right there. I think we could all get behind that. Let's all stop being assholes. Let's all free the nips and everybody would be that much happier. How much do you guys trust me here? You think we can, we can shoot some of these gaps? Dude, this is, this is making me a little, this is making me a little bit nervous. This is making me a little bit nervous. Just a little bit, just, just a little bit nervous. We're, we're made it. We're good. <clears throat> Didn't. Didn't nearly just just crap my pants. <laughs> that was so close. Now gaps like this, we can definitely definitely fit through. But that that last one, we lost quite a bit of altitude, and that that got a that got a little bit hairy. So we're we're just gonna see what we can do here. Check it out, all these construction buildings and stuff. Dude, this this is just amazing. Like I love it. I've always loved visiting New York. I couldn't ever see myself living there. I mean, I watch like Casey Neistat videos and stuff and he makes it look glamorous, but I'm sure people that live there absolutely love it. I just, dude, I, I like space. I, I like living on a lake. I like, you know, having a backyard, that sort of thing. That's the Empire State Building, one of the most iconic landmarks in New York City. Kind of a, a bit of a historic landmark, or at least becoming so, you know, obviously the city's starting to get dominated by these new high-rises and stuff that they're building, but uh, this thing is always going to be cemented in U.S. history. It's actually really interesting. This was built as a part of a project and a, a race to build the tallest building in the world, and uh, it was successful. They built it in about 20 months. They tore down a hotel, built the Empire State Building in its place. After they had demolished when it was just ground, to building this thing, it only took them 20 months, which is ridiculous. That is so crazy. It's uh, obviously the focal point of tons of movies. You know, think of King Kong and and Batman and stuff like that. I always think of Bruce Wayne and, and Batman when I when I see this building. But um, yeah, just super super iconic, super legendary building. There's an observation deck on top that you can go look out over the city. It uh, it actually has its own zip code, like the building itself. It's the only building in New York City with that zip code, which is, is kind of interesting. I think that's kind of cool. And uh, just a, a very important piece of New York right there. It's just, it's, it's so crazy. Just how many businesses, how many residences, 
how much is, is going on in this city. Now, getting over here towards Central Park, this is just such an incredible place. One of my favorite places. I, I always love going here when I go to New York. Uh, before we get to that, this area, I believe, is called Billionaire's Row. Pretty much the taller you are in New York City for your residence, the more expensive it's going to be. Everybody wants to be up high so you can get those views, especially if you have views of Central Park. I mean, when you think about it, if you're living in a condo and you're just looking at concrete in the street all day, that would get a little bit depressing. So all the rich folk are like, oh, hey, let's build some big buildings that look over the big green park here. No, but seriously, that's that's really how it be. You know, the, the higher up you are, the more expensive it's going to be. And then plus Central Park gets some very premium prices. So I believe this building right here is a new one currently being built called four, not 432 Park Ave. That's this one. Central Park Tower, maybe something like that. I don't know. This here was the tallest residential building in the world until this one started being built. I think this one's supposed to be done in 2020. This one, 432 Park Ave, I mean, it's a, it's a big building. It's got fantastic 360 degree views of the city, but a lot of people are really upset with it. They think it's really, really ugly and it kind of ruined the skyline. This one, people seem to be more excited about, but it's just, it's insane, dude. Like the lowest floor you can have a unit on is I think the 32nd floor. Those go for around $6 million for a two bedroom. Up top, some of the bigger ones, 60 to $80 million. Like it, it just, just insane. But imagine being at the top of that. I'm gonna throw some, some pictures on screen. Imagine being at the top of that and looking out over all of New York City. New York is one of the richest cities in the world. They've got the most millionaires and billionaires per capita of any other city. So think about if you were looking out over all of them, and they were beneath you. I mean, that that would be pretty cool, but uh, man, that, that would be expensive. So now we're gonna make our way into Central Park. So this is the biggest urban park in the US. Uh, you know, obviously there are bigger like national parks and stuff like that, but uh, actually I don't even know if it's the biggest, it's the most visited urban park in the US. It's two and a half miles long by about a half mile wide. There are seven man-made lakes. As you guys can see, we are passing over a few of them right here. All kinds of historical buildings and monuments and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, seven man-made lakes, 9,000 park benches, and over 58 miles of walking paths, which is absolutely insane. So there's a little bit of everything for everyone. You guys can see there are baseball diamonds, there are concert venues, there are just clear paths where you can, you know, lay out a picnic and just relax. It's basically like an oasis away from the city. It's kind of like the governor's island that we saw. It's meant to allow people to get out of that mindset, get away from the hustle and bustle, get away from all the concrete and the metal and the skyscrapers and just kind of relax. Now this park here is bigger than the country of Monaco. That's insanity. You could fit the entire country of Monaco in this baby and still have some room left over. That is, that is just so insane. It's also the most filmed location in the world. It's been featured in more than like three or 400 major motion pictures, like big, big, you know, prime time movies. So it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Chelsea and I actually, we filmed here with Royal Caribbean. The video hasn't come out yet, but uh, up until the virus happened, one of their new ships, Oasis of the Seas, was supposed to start sailing out of the city and we were gonna go up and we were gonna like make content around it coming there and like talk to New Yorkers and get them hyped up for it and then go on the sailing. And uh, we did like on the street interview style stuff where we would pull people in and be like, yo, you wanna answer some questions and try to get a prize? It was a lot of fun, really funny content. We were able to give some people some free cruises and make some people's day, it was awesome. I'm hoping one day we're gonna be able to, to actually show that video, but who knows? what's going to happen and, and you know where travel is going to be anytime soon but um yeah so uh we were able to film officially like with the permit in the the you know central park of new york city which is is not something a lot of people can say now uh one final fun fact about the park it can cost up to two hundred and ninety thousand dollars for a hot dog stand permit to be able to to sell hot dogs in this thing now i did the math if you were charging ten dollars per hot dog You'd have to sell 80 hot dogs a day just to break even. 
So I don't know who's out there buying that many hot dogs, but it is one of the most trafficked places in the world. So, you know, maybe maybe those hot dog vendors are uh, are making some bank. But um, anyway, guys, there you guys have it. That is, is you know, we, we hit a, a big part. The thing is, is New York City has so many points of interest and so many things happening. I mean, we saw One World. We saw the statue. We saw like lower Manhattan and we flew over like Wall Street and stuff like that. If you guys didn't know, that's that's that whole area. We saw Central Park. We saw some of the tallest buildings. We saw JFK. At least as far as I'm concerned, that's like a lot of the, the you know, touristy New York that I know. I'm sure there's a lot more we could check out and uh, maybe we should. Maybe we could do a part two. So if any of you guys are from New York, if you feel like we missed anything, feel free to let me know. And um, thank you guys so much for watching. This was good. I'm glad it was fairly smooth. I mean, the cars are coming out of the bridge here. I'm not sure what's going on with that. They're floating. It's not perfect, but at least it was smooth. Like it, We're on ultra. It's not going to get any better than this. I think maybe we could have a little bit more detail on the trees and a little bit more detail on the shadows. But in terms of buildings and everything, we are all maxed out here. So this is what New York City looks like here and Microsoft Flight Simulator. So anyway, there you guys have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I certainly did. It was uh, it was pretty amazing to see New York this close and personal. And uh, we're, we're gonna go ahead and do one final little flyby of, of Lower Manhattan here. In case you guys are, are into it or anything, this is actually the, the very, very southern tip of it, basically, is, is kind of the, the main financial district. That's where you'd find Wall Street and the New York Stock Exchange and stuff like that. When I was uh, thinking about what I wanted to do with my life back in high school, which nobody really knows what they want to do at that point in time, I uh, one of the, the major things was air traffic control. The other major thing was I wanted to be something in finance, most likely an investment banker. You know, go live in New York City, work on Wall Street, make ridiculous amounts of money. I'm pretty sure you can graduate graduate college and make like 300K plus as an investment banker, but it's it's crazy difficult, super, super competitive, and not really a good lifestyle. You, you don't have any time outside of work. You don't have any time for yourself. Lots of depression, people turn to drugs, that sort of thing. You always like Wolf of Wall Street style stuff. It's it's just, it's, it's not good. So with that, I think I'm gonna call it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I couldn't think of any, any better way. Oh wow, look at that, talking about you know, Wall Street and all the money and everything. We've got yachts down there. That's crazy. I couldn't think of any better way to uh, to end out this episode than to put this thing in the Hudson just like good old Captain Sully, baby. So we're going to go ahead and reduce power. We're going to put our, our flaps down. We're going to keep our landing gear up. And we are slowly but surely going to lower this bad girl into the water. If you guys don't know, he was a commercial pilot. They lost all four engines due to a flock of birds, and he was able to, to land it in the Hudson, and nobody died. So we're going to try to make this a really, really smooth landing. Obviously, the game's not actually going to let us land here. It's going to give us that black screen, but we can pretend. Set her down easy, Trev. Nicely done.